In order for the game to recognize that we are trying to load a new modification or mod into the game, each of these mods requires what is called a moddesk.xml. If we open the XML file, we can see the XML declaration directly in the top line, a syntax consisting of a standardized recognition string. We never need to change this for a mod in Farming Simulator. Below this, we find the tag element mod desk desk version equals 60. This is the number of the desk version and is decisive if our mod can be loaded in a certain patch. For example, if we change this value to 62, the mod will no longer be displayed in the mod hub in an earlier release version, for example in 60 or 61. We can find the current mod desk version of the game in the log point text in the local game folder. See, users, username, documents, my games, farming simulator, log point text. Next thing is the author tag. This should be our modder or mod team name. In the contributors tag, you can enter names of modders that you've collaborated with and who have helped finish the project. When a mod is uploaded to the mod hub for the first time, the mod should be given the version 1.0.0.0. The number may be raised with further updates. In the title tag, we enter the title of the mod. If the names are different in different languages, we should make sure here that we enter the names correctly for the respective language. If no tag is written, for example, Polish, here PL, English will always be used. We have a similar structure for the description. Inside the description section, we again subdivide by language. And if no specific language is entered, English is selected again. With C data, character data are marked whose contents are not analyzed by the parser. Thus, it is possible to use line breaks or special characters like the German popular umlauts. It should be mentioned that you can also use C data within the title. For example, to use the special character for ampersand or similar. In the following, we find icon file name. Here we specify the path to the mod icon. So far in our case, it is only a stylized background. At the end of the tutorial, we deal with creating our own image of our mod. In the tag multiplayer, we indicate if our mod is multiplayer ready. If not, we set support to false. If we want to create a mod that can only be used in multiplayer mode, we can set only to true. Normally this feature is disabled, even if we have cleared it out. L10N stands for localization. The following explanation is based on this, L followed by 10 letters and N, and it is there to ensure the translation for each language. For example, we can store a description for a barrel with type desk underscore gooseneck trailer in our mod, and we'll then get the correct German translation from our localization with Schwanenhalsfass in game. The tag store items is used to enter the path to our vehicle XML file. The mod desk XML is loaded initially, and then opens the vehicle XML, which we will deal with in the next chapter. The specializations can load external scripts for vehicles that add features that are not present in the base game. In our theoretical case, we want to add a sickle animation and a script for straw bunches in our specializations. In the next step, the vehicle types are the specializations assigned to a vehicle. As parent of the specializations, we take a known vehicle type from the base game and extend it with our scripts. In this theoretical case, we use the capabilities of a combine to make it a hand tool with new animations and a visual output of straw sheaves. With extra source files, we can load external scripts that should not be explicitly used in a specification for our machine. For example, a mod script that makes global changes to the game, like changing elements in the UI, user interface. The dependencies tag is used to imply certain mods. For example, a mod uses scripts from an already existing mod, and to use these functions, the existing mod should also be present. With brands, we can add new brands or manufacturers, and also provide a logo for the respective brand. With brand colors, 
we can directly define color values in the sRGB spectrum. Useful are also the joint types, where we can declare new attachment points, which are not in-game yet, and can be set up in our vehicle XML later. A material holder can load additional materials from i3D files, that for example can be used for particle effects. With store packs, starter packs can be offered inside the store. In the base game, for example, a potato farmer's starter pack is displayed as a selection, which explains the newcomer what kind of machines are needed for the first step to get into potato production. Via connection hoses, new hose connections can also be brought into the game without an additional script. Here, as an explanation, the XML path to our previous standard connectors has been stored. Now it's also possible without further scripts, for example, to assign different bales via XML to a baler or similar. Ultimately, we only need a very small selection of the above given possibilities for our current mod. But nevertheless, they are available to us and we had a look at them in this chapter, so we know what is possible and what's not.